Hey everybody, Dave here, Hidden Off Grid, and welcome back to this last part of this nine part series. So this is video nine of my 2022 Appalachian Trail through high gear list. He's starting on the Appalachian Trail roughly about June 1st is my target date up in Katahdin, so I'd appreciate it if you follow along when I start the videos. Today we're gonna to be talking about the last uh, big three items, I guess. Big three and plus the sleeping pad. I kind of done a video like this in the past, not that long ago, but I've changed some stuff up just a tad bit. So we're gonna go through those changes today and kind of look at these big three items. They weigh a ton because they're the big three. So, all right, all these items will be down at lighterpack.com, which is the link down in the description slash first pin comment. Use the first pin comment if the link doesn't work in the description. The weights are out there and uh, the links to the manufacturer's website or where I got the items is down there as well. All right, let's go ahead and get started. First item up is this big Agnes sleeping pad here. And this, so this is the big Agnes AXL sleeping pad. It is a mummy style, by the way. Um, I recently switched this out because I have a Neo Air X Lite as well. And this weighs less than the Neo Air X Lite, but people have said it doesn't hold up as good. I'm gonna try it out, see how it works. This is 11.4 ounces. I think the Neo Air X Lite is like 15 or 16 ounces. Um, we'll save the Neo Air X Lite for a different time. If this pops on the trail, I'll patch it up until it doesn't pop. And if it keeps popping, I'll probably just get a Neo Air X Lite on the trail. So this is the sleeping pad I'll be bringing here. It does come in the stuff sack as well. And uh, well, I don't know if you want to spend time putting the stuff sack in the morning, but it is what it is. I think my biggest issue when it comes to sleeping pads is the fact that I'm a you know a leg outer type of person, so I like to sleep on my stomach with a leg out, and I don't know how well these sleeping pads are gonna do. I cannot sleep on my back, so we're gonna try it out. I wish they made a sleeping pad that kind of came down like this and it had like a little out section there. You can put your leg, you know, and then it comes down, but they don't make one like that. Maybe I should patent one, patent pending. Next item up is the quilt I'll be bringing, and I've <laughs> tried many uh, different options here. So this is the quilt and lighting equipment. It's a custom built one, so it's a 950 down. It is a 40 degree, it's a long, it's a wide, 14.3 ounces. And I uh, can't remember what color it is. Let's take a look at the color here. So the color is, oh, is that black? I don't know what color that is. Ah, oh, it's blue. So we got black inside, we got blue. It's like a charcoal inside. Then we got the blue um, on the outside. So it's custom made by Enlightened Equipment. Um, you don't have to get a custom made one. You can actually, they have a lot of pre-made ones too. It might not be the exact fill you want um, or the exact color you want, but you don't gotta wait, you know, the three or four or five weeks or whatever it takes to have a custom built one either. Um, I wanted the highest fill that I could possibly get from them. This quilt here weighs 15.3 ounces. Of course, it said 13 on there, 14 on there, but the stuff sack uh, makes it weighs a tad bit more. The stuff, the stuff sack, you don't actually take in that big sack. You actually take it in the stuff sack itself. Preferably, you take it in one, like a Z-Pax one or something like that, that's waterproof just in case you fall down in the water or something like that. You do not want your quilt to actually get wet. Um, that's a 40 degree. I actually have a 10 degree or 20 degree out in the other room. Uh, because I'll be starting in June, it makes sense just to bring the 40. I don't understand why I would need anything warmer than that. Matter of fact, I used to have a sleeping bag. I got rid of all the sleeping bags, went to a quilt. I think once you try a quilt, you'll probably never go back to a sleeping bag. It, there's just a lot more options. This has a closed foot box on it, by the way, but it's it kind of can turn out to be like a blanket. And I think I like that option. Um, now, if it's cold, it might become a little bit of an issue, but try one. Try one and let me know how it works for you. I don't think you'd ever go back to a sleeping bag once you try a quilt. Plus, they weigh less. They're more versatile. Um, so, it is what it is. Next item up we're going to be bringing here, and this is the biggie. This is the Z-Pax Plexamid Camo uh, tent that I'll be bringing, and uh, plus the stakes right here. So, let's, let's take a look at the stakes real quick because I have a selection of stakes here. So I got some of these, and then I got some of these, uh, what do you call these things, these hoggers or whatever. So I got four of those, and I got six of these. So I'm bringing a selection of stakes, different types, obviously. Uh, might be overkill, but that's just the way Dave is. So I got some of these titanium 
you know, ones that are hoggers or whatever, so they're not gonna bend as easy as these ones here. So I'll be bringing those stakes there, plus I'll bring in the Camo Plexamid tent from z Pax. And uh, I'm at a crossroads because they don't make this tent, in, they don't make this tent in Camo anymore. I do have a duplex that's in Camo as well that I'm gonna be saving that I'll probably never use on a through hike, so I'm okay with using this Plexamid. Uh, you know, because it's most likely going to be destroyed on this through hike. They don't make it anymore. They don't, I mean, they make the Plexamid, but they don't make it in camo anymore. So I actually even thought about buying another one that's brown just to take on the through hike and then save my Plexamid and camo. Uh, but I always have the duplex and camo that I can kind of just keep, uh, you know, as my everyday tent that I'm not doing a through hike with. So I'm okay with bringing this one, I suppose. But this tent uh, is not cheap. It's close to $700. It weighs about 18 ounces with the stakes, by the way. Um, the duplex weighs a little bit more. But that's one of the reasons why I got it. Um, just because the duplex weighs a little bit more than this one. I figured why not just get a slightly um, lighter tent, the Plexamid, which should fit me lengthwise and widthwise. And tall wise, I'm six foot, so it should work out for me. We'll have all the extra room as the duplex inside where I can, I can, I think I can still get my pack in there and all that and kind of still have a little bit of room to maneuver. It's essentially about half as wide as a duplex. So if you've been in a duplex before, this should work for you. Kind of just think of if you've ever had two people in a duplex, then kind of just split that in half and that's how much you, how, that's how much room you'll actually have in the Plexamid. Last item we're gonna talk about today is my pack, and I've switched this up recently from the last video I did because I was originally gonna bring the Z Packs Arc Blast. It's a very super light uh, pack, it's just there's a flaw with that pack for me. I don't know if it's a flaw for everybody, but for me, there's a flaw with that pack, and it's just something I couldn't deal with, so I'm gonna end up going with this pack instead. Um, unfortunately, this pack weighs more, but it is what it is. So, all right, what pack am I gonna be bringing? We're gonna be bringing this pack here, and this pack is from Hyperlite. It's the Junction model, by the way. So it's a 2400 Junction. This is the tall because I'm six foot, even though you know people that are six six still have a tall as well. Uh, but you, I have a really long torso for some reason. So Hyperlite Mountain Gear. It's the tall, it's the junction, and the only difference between the junction and the other model that they have is these side pockets right here are actually enclosed instead of having mesh. So the junction has the clothes. I can't remember what the other name of the model is, but the 2400 non-junction model, whatever that model is, they actually have just mesh on the side, so it doesn't protect the items as well on the side. If you're rubbing against trees or bushes, you could get a snag and it could put a hole in it and the item could fall out and you don't even know it. So I actually got just off to get this model here. Probably weighs just a smidge more, but um, this is what I'm bringing. I'm actually gonna add some accessories to it. It comes with the hip belt, hip belt pockets automatically. Unlike the Arc Blast from z Pack, you actually have to add those. It's got a roll top on it. I'm not gonna do an in-depth review of it because you can obviously go to their website and get all the review there. Plus there's plenty of other websites and or YouTube channels that have done extensive reviews of this pack. It's got a roll top, I like that. Um, the main reason why I like this pack, let's see if I can get it on the camera here, is this, is this right here. The shoulder straps come all the way to the top. So you roll this down, it comes all the way to the top. The arc blast only comes to roughly about right here. And guess what, when I'm going up hills, the back of the pack, yeah, is that the back? Yeah, I guess that, that is the back. The back of the pack hits the back of my head when I'm going up hills, and that is just something I can't not deal with. Even though that pack is several ounces lighter than this pack, I'm gonna go with this pack. I'm gonna try it out, and uh, maybe Z-Packs will adjust some of their newer packs going forward. I don't know. It might not be an idiot. Uh, it might not be an issue for some people, but for me, it's too big of an issue. I actually added this accessory here. I can't remember where I had these made. Uh, I think I got them made by Etsy. I'll put the link down in the description for these. This is for a water bottle holder here. Um, it was mentioned in one of somebody else's YouTube channel that I watched or whatever. So that's a water bottle holder. I actually need to finish putting that on. 
And then I also have one of these phone carriers here that should go on the other pocket here. Carry a phone in there. This is made by the same manufacturer, so it attaches very well to this pack. In addition to this here, I have an option that I bought from the same manufacturer, and that's this here. Uh, actually comes with straps as well. You could use it technically as a fanny pack or a shoulder pack. I won't be bringing this as a shoulder pack or a fanny pack, but what this does is it goes across the, the uh, chest strap. It kind of goes in between. So it kind of, this chest strap goes through right here, goes all the way through. So it kind of would be sitting right here on your chest. You got the pack on, this is sitting right here. I might bring this instead of this. I haven't made a decision yet. This is obviously has a lot more room in it. Um, and you could put your phone in there or whatever, because I was gonna put my phone in here, right? Uh, but you can put candy bars in here, you can put your wallet in here, you can put you know your snacks in here. And instead of having to take your pack off, get your snacks out for the day, you can, carry, you can carry them in this. Plus, when you're done with the Appalachian Trail through hike, you can wear this as a fanny pack if you want, or when you're traveling, put the straps, because this has little straps that pop out on the side, uh, right here. It's a little pop out. And then it has straps that connect to these. They just clip in. And then you can wear it as a shoulder pack if you want. You can wear it as a hip belt, or you can wear it as a fanny pack. So this is very versatile. Uh, if, I, if you're gonna buy one of these packs, think about getting one of these with it because you can actually get a discount if you buy um, all the stuff at one time. So that's kind of cool. It opens up, it's all, it's got, I don't know if it's got YKK zippers on it or not, it might, but it is all waterproof and all that. So this is what I'll probably most likely go with instead of going with the pouch that goes on the shoulder strap. This just, to me, offers a little bit more versatility, plus I can use it even afterwards if I want. Um, I don't even know what I mean by afterwards. I can use it afterwards anyway, so what's the difference? So this is most likely what I'll go with. What I'll actually, the only thing I'll probably do with this is actually strap it on to the chest strap, so that way when I'm taking the chest strap off, this just is, doesn't fall off, you know? Um, that was my only, probably con of using or bringing this is just having this fall off every time that you actually take your pack off and I just don't want to deal with that. I just want to be able to take my pack off, have this kind of remain on there, not come off, have to worry about it coming off. It's attached snugly and not have to worry about it and the way it is by default it could just slide off. It doesn't attach, it just kind of just slides on so it could easily just slide off as well. So that is one thing I need to remedy. I don't know if it just means I gotta drill some holes into the back end of this here or not, and then zip tie it on to the actual chest strap, but I need to get that figured out. I'm aiming at going with this, so. All right, well, that's the big three. Um, let's see, what is the pack weigh? The pack is 34.5 ounces. I do not have a weight on this. I do not have a weight on this because I haven't decided which one I'm gonna go with. When I actually decide and get closer to decide, I'll actually put it on the lighterpack.com um, website as well. So, all right, well, if you have any questions about any of these items I've talked about today, um, please leave a comment down below. I, you know, I can answer those questions for you if I can, if I have the answer. So if you have any you know, suggestions or anything like that, what I've talked about as well, I'd love to hear it. So, all right, well, go ahead and uh, please like and subscribe if you're interested in seeing future videos on the Appalachian Trail through hike starting June 1st, roughly going southbound. Appreciate it if you support me. So we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.